All right, I'll go ahead and do a video with the, with the selfie view. Why not? Anyway, uh, this is an embarrassing Tales from the Gym. What kind of embarrassing? Not that embarrassing. I'm going to get everything ready to start driving. Okay. So, kind of embarrassing. Right now, I'm on vacation or break from work, teaching for a few weeks. So I'm going every day to the to the gym. And uh, today, one of the coaches asked me to clinch spar with uh, this with this guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave names out like I like to do when I do a tales from the gym. Um, Irish guy, um, getting ready for his second fight at Rasha Demir. Um, he's 27 years old. Won his first fight by spinning back fist KO. Um, I've got to tell you from watching him over the months, kid's got a decent kick. Pretty good kick. Um, I think uh, as long as he's fighting other foreigners, he'll, he'll be okay. So today, uh, Pan asked me to, to clinch spar with him. And, you know, as I have iterated numerous times, I never turn down sparring. I especially don't turn down clinch sparring. I especially don't turn down um, clinch sparring with a foreigner that has got some fights under their belt. Mostly because I want to know, as an old man, 53 years old, fast, going on 54 <laughs> how do I stack up with these young bucks that are coming over here and you know trying to get fights or whatever should I be crazy enough to go ahead and say yes I'll fight any of these non ties that are my weight class that aren't you know well known professionals am I willing to, to say that. So anyway, I spar with, with the with the kid and not surprisingly because I in the times I've watched him do um, pad work and spar with some other guys there. I've never seen him really do clean stuff. And um, and I felt it, you know, as I said before when I talk about clinching, you can feel right away how much a person knows what they're doing. And I felt right away that he is not comfortable being face-to-face -face with someone. At all. In that type of setting. Standing face-to-face. -face. He, he, he had told me that he had some MMA and uh, Jiu-Jitsu experience. But going by his feel, I'd say that, the, that his Experience those things is pretty limited, and I and I I got to uh, <laughs> I got to find out just how limited it was because as I was kind of you know for lack of a better term manhandling him in the clinch, um, he tried to duck down on a single arm, which you know is not a tie clinch, and I just reverted to my instincts, man, and I folded up that Darth grip around his neck and um, I pretty much lifted him up uh, John Jones versus Leoto Machida style and I really didn't know I was getting that kind of lift on him until he was tapping frantically and I heard coach oh, John, John and I let go right away um, but the thing is is while I was getting that torque and I had the bicep rib. I dug my elbow into my ribs and it kind of fucking hurts really bad. Um, a previously fractured, broken, floating rib from one of my dear sparring partners back in the United States. And his name I will mention, I suppose, if he's listening or not. You're still my brother, Big Mike. Can't wait to get back in the ring with you again one more time before we die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, sparring with that guy once, you know, a uh, natural heavyweight. 
meaning that you know if you put him on a diet and completely dehydrated him, he'd still weigh over 100 kilos. I'm pretty sure. Um, he's a big guy, and when you spar with big guys like that, sometimes you know you can get hurt. And I did that one day. I got my rib. He's a fracture broken. I don't know. I didn't get real uh, medical x-rays, but I felt the bone uh, fold inside of my body. <laughs> anyway, at that exact spot, that's where I kind of had my elbow. You can't really see it because the way I got this camera here, but I kind of had my elbow dug into that rib as I was getting that lift. So it was acting as a fulcrum. So it really dug into it. And man, it hurts. It made it to where after the second round, I didn't want to do left kicks anymore. Because um, uh, folding my hips in that manner and, and bending my, my, my torso in that manner was really irritating that rib. But yeah, I think I, think I should ask to do a fight before I'm way too old. And, and see what happens. I, I, I kind of really like my odds. You know, my, my biggest uh, apprehension about fighting younger guys was, you know, I want to make sure I have at least a 50-50 chance at winning the fight. At worst, I want a 50-50 chance. I don't want a, uh, uh, a complete jabroni that I'm just going to ransack. I want a real challenge, so to speak. But I wasn't sure that I should be fucking around with the young bucks. But the more and more I see them, man, and I feel them, feel like I got an advantage on them. I really do. Maybe I'm maybe I'm I'm too full of myself to concede it. I don't know. Maybe. Time will tell. I reckon. But I would really like to do a temple fight just because I feel like pretty much every real not moy starts at, at a Watt Fair. So I should do a temple fight. That's my biggest, if I'm going to do a fight, I'd really like it to be a temple fight. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. But I would do one of the smaller arenas or whatever. I definitely would not, you know, nothing against the Irish guy for fighting at Rochdam, right? The guy I'm talking about that I, I sparked and clinched with today. Nothing against him for doing that. It's a golden opportunity. If I was a 20-something in Thailand, I would jump at that as well. But for me, as a old grizzled vet, in a way, you know, gym vet, um, I don't think that I'm worthy of fighting at a place like that, necessarily. But, you know, I suppose the right things happen or, or whatever. But I, 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 I think I would be too taken in by the environment if I was to fight at one of the famous places. As opposed to if I was fighting at a temple show or um, a level up from a gym smoker. Right? And I would do a smoker too, depending on who was putting it together. And um, as long as, again, I'd, I am confident in fighting right now a younger fella, but I don't want a younger fella that's a seasoned pro. I want a younger fella that has less than five pro fights under their belt. That guy, I like my chances. 50-50 at, at worst, or best, I guess, what, how are you gonna put it? But 50-50 is the, what I want to feel like my real odds are. I don't wanna feel like my odds are next to, are small and winning. And that's what I always felt like for the past for the time I've been living here, that's what I felt like would be the case. Because, you know, younger, stronger, faster, blah, 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 blah. And I definitely don't want to fight another time. That's just my own hang-up. Right? I, I, I don't know that, um, one, 
because of my size and weight class, I wouldn't get a guy that was actually in shape, I don't think. A tie, made a tie. I would get someone that's overweight and, you know, not really in their prime condition. And I feel like that would be an unfair advantage. Um, and plus, I would be a lot more, this is gonna sound bad, I would be a lot less apprehensive about hurting a fellow foreigner. Because that's what this game is. It's hurting. They're going to try and hurt me, I'm going to try and hurt them. That's, that's what it is. It is what it is. It's why even though I was just sparring with that guy, when he went down on a single, my instincts immediately kicked in. It's like, no. You're not taking me down at all costs. I'm not getting on my back right now. And I'm gonna make you pay for even thinking you can put me on my back. And that's, you know, that's there. That isn't something I thought about while it was happening. It's something that just happens uh, organically, so to speak. Uh, so that too also gives me more and more confidence that my IQ is going to be enough to make up for the speed and, and the youthful virility difference, especially with the guys I'm talking about. But anyway, I, I, I've uh, yammered on for too long. I'm going to stop now.